we've talked about technicalities of enterprise architecture. I've talked about leadership, I've talked about human behavior, I've talked about all kinds of things. So let's take enterprise architecture and a little get a little fundamental on a few technical aspects. So we all know that enterprise architecture handles various kinds of data. It looks at business, business processes, business functions, business capabilities, etc. And then it looks at applications and how the applications support the business functions and capabilities and so on and so forth. And we also understand that it looks at data and how data flows through the entire organization, how data is being managed, how applications manage the data, etc. We also know that it looks at technologies, you know, technology platform, whether it's public cloud or on-premise data centers or connectivity and so on and so forth. So how do we really do this? Now, it's not possible to do all of this without using a proper enterprise architecture tool. Let's say that you create an enterprise architecture diagram. Let's say that you're using Visio. If you're using Visio and if you create an enterprise architecture diagram, you're going to store it somewhere. Let's say you store it in SharePoint. What happens to that document really? In the real world, nobody's going to take a look at that document once it has been created. Maybe they will look at it once while you know building it, but does it remain up to date? Let's say that you create an application architecture diagram and it shows all the applications and how they interact with each other and how they share data. Now, the applications are going to change. You might have to refresh the applications. You might have to change the applications. You might go from an application that is hosted on on-premise data center infrastructure as a service to you might go to SaaS. You know, there's rise with SAP now coming. So majority of the organizations that were hosting SAP on their on-premise data centers or on public cloud may choose to go SaaS. Now, when you do that, what happens to the previous arch application architecture diagram that you had created? You'll have to go back and change everything again. So maintaining the architecture artifacts becomes a hassle. But if you have a good enterprise architecture tool, there's a tremendous amount of automation that is possible that will help us in automating all these updates and activities. How does that really happen? How does it work? So to understand all of that, we will have to go into understanding a few fundamentals of enterprise architecture. Now, there are a number of ways that you can really do enterprise architecture. There is the TOGAF framework, um, and then there is the Zachman framework, and then there are a couple of other frameworks. I will primarily talk about uh, TOGAF framework, but before I move into TOGAF framework, I will generally talk about Zachman framework. Now, Zachman framework is a five by six matrix. What Zachman framework does is it give, provides in the rows, it provides the executive perspective, um, the business perspective, the architecture perspective, the engineer perspective, the technician perspective. These are the five rows. And on the columns, it has what, how, where, who, when, and why. Right? These are all six different questions that we ask. And then the combination of these. So, for example, what, and then executive perspective. We create a few models, you know, models that will basically be viewed by the executive committee or the senior leadership team. And the what would be defined by the model or the how will be defined by the model or when, where, why, etc. will be defined by the model. So it, it creates a basic set of building blocks that architects have to create that can be viewed by the senior executives and that, that will make sense to the senior executives. And then in the next row, we've got the uh, business perspective and then the next row, we've got the architect's perspective and so on and so forth. In Toga framework, it's slightly different. So in Toga Frameworks also, we have building blocks. Now, if you talk to John Zachman, he will tell you that the Zachman framework is primarily about building blocks only. It doesn't work with composites. Uh, there's a concept of composites there. Uh, a composite is multiple building blocks put together. You form a composite, right? Uh, and he describes the, uh, the Zachman framework core building blocks as the, the elements chart. In physics, we have elements, compounds, and mixtures. So he describes the, the building blocks as the elements. You know, you mix elements and you form compounds. So H2O is water, right? And H2SO4 and so on and so forth. The same concept is there, but slightly differently described in TOGAF. In TOGAF, we've got building blocks, we've got artifacts, 
and we have deliverables, right? Artifacts and deliverables are composites. The building blocks are defined in what you call the, the content meta model. There's a concept called content meta model uh, and the, the content framework. The content framework is primarily a comprehensive checklist of all the deliverables that you can deliver as a part of enterprise architecture. And it is mapped with the architecture development method. So for example, in business architecture, what are the deliverables that you know you should work on? Or in data architecture, what are the deliverables you should work on? In application architecture, what are the deliverables that you can work on? And so on and so forth. The content framework in TOGAF also has what you call the content meta model. The content meta model is a model of a model. So it has described within it uh, various building blocks that can be used to create artifacts. So if you are working on an application architecture diagram, then what are the different building blocks that you can use to create that artifact? So for example, an actor is a building block. An application is a building block. A physical application component is a building block. Um, a physical technology component is a building block and so on and so forth. And not only does it describe a list of all the building blocks that you can use to create artifacts, it also describes the potential relationships between these building blocks. So for example, an actor cannot directly access a data entity. A data entity is a building block, an actor is a building block, but there is no direct relationship between the actor and the data entity. The reason is that to be able to manipulate or use a data entity, an actor requires one of the two things. Either it requires a physical application component, you will need an application to be able to access that data, or it requires a physical technology component, which is, for example, if it's the Oracle database, then you would require an Oracle client. If it is a SQL Server database, then you will require a SQL Server Management Studio to, to write queries and to manipulate the data. So these relationships are also, by the way, described in uh, the content meta model. So content meta model contains architectural building blocks, the core entities that we are going to be using to create artifacts, which raises a very interesting question. What is an artifact, right? So there are three kinds of artifacts which are described in the TOGAF framework. You have catalogs, you have matrices, and you have diagrams. Catalogs are essentially lists of building blocks. So when I create a stakeholder list, it is a catalog, stakeholder catalog, right? Uh, it is a list of all the stakeholders. Stakeholder is a building block and a stakeholder catalog is a list of the type uh, stakeholder. Now the stakeholder would be actor really, right? So uh, the core building block for stakeholder is an actor. So a stakeholder catalog is a list of all the actors who are stakeholders of whatever it is that we are trying to do. That is called a stakeholder catalog. Similarly, an application catalog, a data entity catalog and so on and so forth. So catalog is a list of building blocks. The second artifact is a matrix. Matrix is relationships between various building blocks. So in a tabular format, right? In an Excel sheet, for example. So when you create an application interaction matrix, right? It shows uh, various applications and how they interact with each other or uh, application data entity matrix. All the different data entities that are used by various applications in the system. So, you know, it creates a relationship between the type uh, application and the type data entity in a tabular format. That is the second type of uh, artifact. The third kind of architectural artifact described by TOGAF is a diagram. Now everybody understands the diagram. A diagram is a graphical representation of relationships between various types of building blocks. So if you create an application interaction matrix, you can also create an application interaction diagram, right? It shows the interaction between the various applications and how data is shared between them. You can create a data entity application diagram. You can create a business function application diagram. So again, diagrams are showing relationship between various types of building blocks uh, within the overall system. So now we understand building blocks and we understand what artifacts are. There are three types of artifacts, catalogs, matrices and diagrams. Which brings us to the next kind of architectural work product that is described in the TOGA framework, which is deliverables. Now what are deliverables as described by TOGAF deliverables are contractual uh, 
uh, outputs of an architecture project. This could be a requirement specification document. It could be a statement of architecture work. It could be an architecture definition document. It could be, you know, all these different deliverables which are created as a part of the architecture development method in the various phases of the ADM. Now, majority of the deliverables which are created in TOGAF are uh, not specific to any phase of the ADM. So, for example, an architecture requirement specification document will contain the requirements of this architecture project. So, it will be first created in the architecture vision phase and then we update it over a period of time through the various phases of the ADM all the way till migration planning and it remains in draft mode till migration planning and then in migration planning we show our architecture requirement specification document to the stakeholder and the stakeholder understands the requirements, approves the requirements and then the requirement specification document becomes a finalized deliverable. Similarly, we have the architecture definition document in which we cover the qualitative aspects of the architecture that we are building. Similarly, we have the statement of architecture work and so on and so forth. So there are various deliverables which are there within the phases of the idiom which is a part of the architecture content framework. So once again, we have an architecture content framework. Architecture content framework is a comprehensive checklist of all the different deliverables that we are going to be working on as a part of the architecture project. Then we have different kinds of artifacts and then we have architectural building blocks that we use to create these artifacts. Now all the architectural artifacts also go into the architecture deliverable. So for example, an application interaction diagram will go into the architecture definition document. The architecture, uh, the, the stakeholder matrix could go into the architecture requirement specification document or it could go into the statement of architecture work, right? Or both. So there are three kinds of architectural work products. There is deliverables, artifacts and building blocks. There are three kinds of artifacts. We have catalogs, matrices and diagrams. Catalogs are lists of building blocks. Matrices are relationship between building blocks in a tabular format and Diagrams are graphical representation of relationships between various building blocks. And then we have architectural building blocks. Now, in this episode, we are only going to talk about this much. Uh, once we've understood these concepts, in the next episode, we will talk about how these things are relevant, how these things become reusable, etc., etc. And then we go into a little bit of tooling. So, let me know what you think about this. Um, if you have any questions about the stuff that we've um, talked about today, then feel free to reach out. We've got a Telegram group and a LinkedIn discussion group for Enterprise Architecture Radio. Once again, I would like to remind you that Enterprise Architecture Radio is not just a podcast. It is a community of architects and IT professionals coming together uh, to talk about various concepts, to talk about challenges that we face in the business or how we are doing our concepts. It is also to ask questions, to answer questions, to learn from each other, to guide each other, but most importantly, have a lot of fun. <laughs>